Today we're gonna cast a replay and analyze the gameplay in Battle for Middle-earth 1 on the beautiful map Anorian. It's a 2v2 match between 4 really great players. I hope you guys gonna enjoy your stays. Let's get it started. At the bottom left side of the map we have the green gondor player Xehanort who is one of the BFME 1 experts. His ally at the top left side is the Orange Eisen Guts player new player, but don't get fooled by his name, he is not a new player, trust me on that one. They are against the blue Gondor player Wizard Gamer, and his ally at the bottom right side is the purple Mordor player DI 2010. Mordor Gondor on the right side, Gondor Isengard on the left. It's a great matchup. The goal from the Gondor Isengard team early on is gonna be to deal as much economical damage to the Mordor player at the bottom right side as possible. And the way to do that is, he's gonna group now his soldiers with the Urukai as they are leading downside as you can see. They're gonna group around this area I'm assuming. And he's gonna Warchant his own Urukai and also his uh, ally soldiers. This way uh, they might possibly be able to destroy all the meals from the Mordor player on the other side. Isengard is building up two furnaces into the Uruk pit. Gondor player, a wizard schema, is gonna try to do the same thing to the Isengard player at the top left side. He's gonna try to destroy this mill. Because evil factions, they are kind of weak early on and they heavily rely on the resource generation from the Lammermills. And that's why in those kind of matchups you will always see the good factions trying to hurt the economy. Warchan is gonna be used now here and Urukai are gonna be used to send forward to this mill. Why? Because Urukai are way, way faster than the soldiers. So sending soldiers to this side would be a big mistake. Because they would be wasting a lot of time. And Warchant might be even fall off by the time. Mordor has to be careful. You don't want to take a fight against soldiers if they are buffed like this. Because they have now 50% more damage and 50% more armor. In the meantime, the Gondor player was able to destroy this mill. And the Gondor player, you know, the green Gondor player at the bottom left side, Xehanort, is using his Hobbit... Hobbit Peregrine took, or Pippin, <laughs> to defend against the soldiers. I should be available if I'm not mistaken. I is available indeed. Might be using it here. He's taking way too much damage here for no reason. He has to use heal now. He is using heal just in time to save the soldier. And against I, you don't want to fight. You know, just let the Hobbit do his thing. Let him deal as much damage as possible. In the meantime, the Gondor player was able to destroy this mill. And the blue Gondor player was able to buy this farm, but now he has to cancel the farm so the Mordor player can buy it back. The reason why the Gondor player was able to buy this farm is because he was using the cloak ability from the Hobbit to get invisible around this area. Isengard was able to destroy this mill, you can see that the Mordor player is just buying it back, but he won't be able to destroy the third mill. Mordor is gonna recover over time, he's building up a furnace, the reason for that is because furnaces are way way tankier than the slaughterhouses. While a Furnace has 3000 HP with level 1, a Slaughterhouse only has 1500 HP. But he will eventually have to make uh, Slaughterhouses. The reason is Food Bonus. With the Slaughterhouses Food Bonus, you can make your Trolls, which is the main force of Mordor, cheaper. If you don't make any Slaughterhouses, however, your Trolls are gonna cost each 1200. If you have 6 Slaughterhouses in your base, you can reduce the cost of the Trolls to 840 resources only. Looks like he's gonna clump against this farm. Uh, the stable is coming up now for the blue Gondor player at the top right side. In the meantime, Isengard player is gonna get some more units on the field to make this Uruk Pits level 2 as soon as possible. That's gonna give him the chance to recruit some pikemen from the Uruk Pit. He's also gonna be able to buy this farm or mill back very very soon. And this mill was protected very nicely here with the help of the Hobbit from Xehanot. The, uh, the green, not the green. The green guns are playing at the bottom left side. And yeah, look at this. Slaughterhouse has 1500 HP. The Furnace has 3000. Gollum is getting recruited now by the Mordor player at the bottom right side. The farm has been still taken down. And he has 3 farms inside. That's the reason why his Gondor Knights are gonna cost 680 instead of 800. And remember he was only playing with one farm for the majority of the game. Yes, he was able to buy this farm for a short period of time. But he lost this very quickly. I believe he was not getting too much value. But of course, uh, during the time you have to farm, Isengard is getting less money, which is always nice. Because once again, early on you want to shut down Isengard and Mordor uh, and destroy their economy. 
Mordi is recovering. He's gonna have now five resource buildings inside the base, four slaughterhouses and one furnace. Gondor player is gonna use his Gondor Knights first of all to kill those uh, soldiers. Very interesting move from the Isengard player to use Warchan on the soldiers. It's a mistake in my opinion. Because the Gondor Knights are gonna be on the field very, very soon. And he should be using the Warchan on the Gondor Knights because they're gonna be much more valuable in those kind of situations. Even with the buff of the Warchant, the soldiers are dying quite quickly against Gondor Knights because they are getting countered, just like that. Nice one here from the Gondor player to save his allies' mill. And Mordo's base is looking great to me. He's going now for the Troll Cage next, and he will need some trolls later on to deal with the combos from the Isengard's player, new player. Let's see what the Gondor Knights are gonna achieve now from Xehanort, who is again one of the BFME 1 expert players. He knows everything about this game. I have high expectations. The host of this game is also the Isengard player at the top left side, by the way. Tainted Land was used from Mordor. You can always spam this Tainted Land all around the place because Gonzo, he can of course cover this land with his own Elven Wood, but so can uh, so can the Blue Gondor player, you know? So the Gondor Mordor team will have always a land advantage against Gondor Isengard team. Gollum is gonna be used to kill some workers. He has even some orcs around this area, pressuring this Lumber Mill workers, and that's the unique part about, about the lumber mills in BFME 1. Without lumber mill workers, you can't make any money. Wizard Gamer is pinging the offensive work layer at the left side, which is still existing on the field. This one has been creeped from the model player, I believe. I might be wrong, I didn't check actually. And there we go, the Gondor Knights are gonna now pressure this mill, but there are some pikemen on the field now, he has to avoid fighting. The first roll is gonna be on the field very, very soon. He has to invest 900 because he has only 5 slaughterhouses instead of 6. Instead of six. If he can demolish this one and make a slaughterhouse instead, he can reduce the cost of the trolls by additionally 60, which is gonna... Which doesn't sound too crazy, but you need to make a lot of trolls and also drama trolls. So it's gonna, it's gonna be nice to have the full bonus of the food bonus from the slaughterhouses. By the way, if you don't know, the orcs are a great counter unit to the pikemen. It means if the mortar player is gonna pressure with his orcs this area, Isengard will be forced to disengage and he will need the help from his ally. He has a lot of Urukai inside the ally's base to not feed them against the Gondor Knights from the blue Gondor player. This farm has been captured by the green Gondor player. The creep has been secured also, I mean the Warwicks. It looks like the Mordor player is clumping against this uh, Warwick player. He's gonna even use Eye of Sauron to kill it as soon as possible. And Mordor is getting a lot of power points from that. He's only one power point away from getting the industry unlocked, which is gonna be a nice power spike. But now, we have some mountain trolls on the field, and they should be more than enough to keep those diamond mills alive against the Gondor Knights from the green Gondor player Xehanort. He has now three Gondor Knights in total on the field, by the way. Stable is level 2. He might go for the Night Shield upgrade, which is gonna increase his durability against the arrows. And once again, rushing the Mortar base in compared to the Isengard base is way, way easier. Because slaughterhouses are so vulnerable. The creep secured by the mortar player. He was also able to secure this layer, by the way. We have only the troll layers remaining now at the top side and also at the bottom side. The Gondor player here has only four blacksmiths inside the base. That means his upgrades are gonna be very, very expensive. And also, uh, he just got a blacksmith level 2. And let me check, uh, let me take a look into the upgrades now from this Gondor Knight. So you see that? They cost 480 each, guys, from the blue Gondor player. And I believe the other Gondor player has to only invest 360. No, he has to also invest 420 because he has only 5 blacksmiths. 6 is the maximum value from every single uh, bonuses you can get from the buildings. Okay, stable level 2. Uh, no Nigel upgrade just yet. He's going for the Forge Blades and Heavy Armor next. Remember, with the Warchant, those Gondor Knights from Xehanort can be really, really strong. And if he can somehow kill this troll there, a troll creep, I mean, a troll cage, I mean, sorry. And this way, deny him the drama trolls or delay him the drama trolls, it would be actually huge. It would be quite nice. Uh, Mordi is getting a lot of money now, guys. Three mills, untouched, uh, protected by the trolls. It's very, very hard for Xeno to deal the damage he's looking for because look at this guarding, guarding with the trolls, you know? Trolls are one of the best counters to the cavalry units in the game. Right, combos coming up, Armory is up on the fields now as well, but he needs to waste a lot, I mean, he needs to spend a lot of time to be able to purchase all the upgrades without the industry. And he's far away from that point. 
He's not fighting for the map control. He's actually waiting on only. That's why I personally like to play aggressively with Isengard. Make lords, run around, try to kill some stuff. And don't wait only in your base to get ready with the upgrades. Because you are gonna lose your power point race against any other faction in the game. More the play on the other side is only half a power point away from the industry. Industry is gonna increase the resource income from the selected slaughterhouses or furnaces by 100%. Which is double, like from 3. So you can buff 3 of them at the same time, like this for example. And then you're gonna get from each of them 100% more money, which is a lot. And Tomorrow Play has also a lot of money collected. He has around 2000 resources. At some point of the game, I believe by the time Isengard player is gonna get ready, he will have the money he needs for the Witch King. With that being said, he will have a lot of leadership. Witch King, Drama Troll... You know, that's gonna make those trolls not only hit like a truck, but also be extremely tanky. 100% damage, 100% armor only from the Drama Troll and Witch King. And you get additionally 50% more damage from the Eye of Sauron as well. That means even a hero like Aragorn, for example, couldn't survive the burst of this mountain trolls from the Mortar player at the bottom right side. This Mortar player, uh, this Gondor player I mean at the top right side, has also now the stable up level 2. He might also go for the Nigel upgrade for the Siege, for the, for the rush I mean against the Isengard player, who has zero defense in his base. But it looks like they don't want to waste time. Now let's talk about what can happen in this kind of situations. Gondor Isengard team, yes, they are strong, but... The lack of damage leadership. The only damage leadership and armor leadership they have right now is the war chant, which is not gonna be enough to burst down these trolls fast enough. I mean, later on, if this Gondor player recruits, oh, there is a war chant play by the way. Alvin Allies was used as well, but he was using the war chant before that, and that's gonna be tainted land, gonna deny the effect of the war chant, of course. And the Alvin Allies was kind of waste. The trolls are charging now. This troll is gonna potentially go down, but it's fine. Three power points invested for killing one troll only and the war chant as well. That's not worth it. Now he has no war chance here. The trolls can charge now. They're gonna deal no damage when the drama troll is nearby. Going for a trample against the combos. And that's gonna hurt the Isengard player big time. The pikemen are trying to do something. The trolls are charging now. And once again, leadership is not available on this Isengard combos. And without leadership, you don't have the burst damage you need to kill these trolls in time. Not even Warchan is available. They take they takes zero damage, look at this. That's what I was trying to say before. Damage leadership is very important against trolls to burst them down fast enough. Because they're gonna charge at you running away. It's most of the time not even our option. So with that being said, you wanna make Lords get him level 5. Or you wanna make Boromir get him level 4. To have this additional leadership you need. Uh, which adds up with the war chant. So you have 110% damage boost, which again might be enough to burst down not only the, the trolls for now, but also the witch king later. And even the Gandalf. Because he has no lords on the field, guys. The mortar player is now gonna capture this middle camp under his control, which is gonna give him more and more money. He has a lot of resource generation, and that's gonna become even now much more scary for the Gondor Isengard team. Saruman can be a nice choice also against troll spam because of the warm tongue ability. But believe me, Isengard has not that much money. Because he lost everything now, he has to make a lot of combos and more and Gondor player. Has almost 5000. He is looking to get Gandalf, but he has not the power points he needs for that. He needs now one and a quarter more power points for unlocking the Gandalf the White spell from the spellbook, which is gonna make Gandalf strong and viable. Without this, Gandalf is gonna become kinda useless because Gandalf is not even being able to get mounted and his spells are not hurting that much. Alright, we have a really highly leveled Gondor Knight by the way with full upgrades guys, it's gonna hurt the Isengard player big time as he has only 2 towers that's not gonna be able to stop him. When you micro well you know, in a situation like this, if you can catch the pikeman with a level 7 Gondor Knight for example, you can even fight the pikeman, no big deal. I believe, oh, there is, there is another rush happening. That's a nice damage dealt actually from the Gonzo player at the bottom right side. Industry was active on the slaughterhouses, but only one of them was able to survive. In the meantime, we have another rush happening at the top left side. Tower is gonna get demolished just in time. A lot of pikemen he has to avoid fighting, avoid trampling at least. You can maybe fight them, but you should not trample them. He's pressing S to not make a mistake. And the level 7 Gondonites are actually hitting like a truck. 
and even destroying those pikemen in seconds. The combo is making a big mistake. I will be used. It's a horrible mistake. He's actually pressing S all the time to not feed this pikeman. There is an Alvin Alice summon this time from the Blue Guns, a player to kill this pikeman in time. Looking for a trample into the backline. Getting a beautiful trample. Heal is being used and he has only two towers. He has not enough damage to, you know, uh, kill this horse is fast enough. Urukpil is down. It means no more pikeman any soon. Elves are doing a nice job and trolls are charging in as well. Holy quacamole, but there comes the protector of the white city, Mifrandier himself, with his green cloak. But he has not the power points he needs just yet for them, guns after white, and he cannot even get mounted on his shadow facts. Almost the power points though, he's like a little bit away, he needs to maybe kill a mill or something. The siege continues, Isengard is losing everything, indeed he has like zero units on the field, let me check. Let me check Isengard. Yeah, he has barely any units around. He has some... Oh, the trolls are charging in as well. There is guns up on the field though. With the Easter Light, he might be able to snipe one of these trolls. He doesn't have the power points, but he has it now. Gandalf turns into Gandalf to white. But will he be able to save his ally? This is going to be the question. One of the Gondor Knights is going to be even able to survive. Level 5. The towers are going down. The Zita is down. That means the buildings can't be rebuilt anymore. Isengard is losing his entire base just like that and Mordor has a lot of money with 6 furnaces inside the middle camp in the middle of the map Anorian. Holy quacamole. What a fiesta. Gandalf is coming. Will he be, you know, will he be enough to save the day? He's gonna use the lightning sword. He's gonna kill some of this elven warriors but trolls are chasing him down. They have the drama troll leadership around. I believe Witch King is going to be soon joining the battlefield. Uh, indeed, no, actually not. He's spamming trolls all the time. His base is not looking that healthy either. Alvin Alice will be now used from the Green Gondor player to save his ally to deal with the trolls. The Drama Troll is not nearby. That means leadership is not available. It's a level 3 furnace, also able to shoot down. One of the trolls is down. The other one is the target now from the Alvin Warriors from the summon of the Gondor player. The Drama Troll is attacking. When you attack with the Drama Troll in BFMU1, you don't give leadership anymore. So very important to keep that in mind. Don't attack with the Drama Troll when you want to be able to give leadership to the allied units around the Drama Troll. I don't know why this is the case, but it is the case. Trust me on that one. The game isn't over yet, but Isengard, I think he is kind of down a lot. He has not that much money. He has to invest so much money and time now into rebuilding everything. He doesn't even have a Uruk Pits now. That means he cannot recruit any more units. No heroes, nothing like that. Gonda is popping off. Xehanar is going inside the middle. Using Easter Light to kill one of the trolls. Gandalf is the best hero of the game, as you guys know. Looks like he's gonna go for a Visa Plus. Knock down this troll eventually. But he has to be careful. Trolls are hitting very hard against Gandalf. Kill is gonna be used very early, maybe he was too scared of getting killed very quickly. But with the shield bubble, which activates always when trolls are attacking you, you can actually block a lot of damage. And they have no Witch King leadership, and Drama Troll once again is attacking, and once again, if this is the case, he doesn't offer any leadership. But for now, the Mordor player is gonna be able to save the middle camp. But during all this time, another rush is happening, Wizard Gamer is asking his ally for the Eye of Sauron, New player, the Isengard player, is asking his ally for the help. The level 3 furnace, the last, the last level 3 furnace in the base of Isengard is going to be taken down. It's a level 10 Gondor Knight, which means max rank. Gandalf is going to be able to scare them away. They have to be careful. A Visa Plus can end their existence in BFME 1. The Siege Works is coming up, double Siege Works actually for the Gondor player. But the problem is, once the Mordor player has a Nazgul or a Witch King on the field, these trebuchets, they don't have enough protection. Once again, no damage leadership for the Isengard combos, as they are trying to recover over time at the well. By the way, quick pro tip, if you don't know, the well of Gonzo is not able to heal trolls or Mumakils or the Nazgûls and not even the Witch King, while Rohan Well from the Rohan faction is able to do that. So if you are playing 2v2 for example, you are Rohan and your ally is Mordor and he has trolls damaged, you can always send the trolls to your well and he will be able to regenerate. But that's not going to be the case when you are playing Gonzo. The troll is down, the drama trolls are not able to match against the Gondor Knights. They are not made to attack, they are going to knock you down but dealing zero damage. They are more like a sportive unit. 
Isengard is still in the game, kinda. He has combos, badly damaged. It looks like the Gondor player is gonna buy this camp eventually. But now we have two Gandalf the Whites on the field. One of them has a blue cloak and the other one has two, uh, a green one. That's a lightning sword being used now from the blue Gondor player. Against the Gondor Knights, they are switching to the normal formation, which is gonna make them tanky. And with the help of Gandalf and his bonus armor leadership, they will be also able to survive. Alvin Elias was used, but they're gonna be once again able to secure the middle camp, and Mordor player might be once again also buying it. Mordor is playing very aggressively, I like to see that, but he lost a lot. Looks like he's saving now for the Witch King, and he's getting closer and closer for this power point. One power point away from getting, that's a beautiful Visa Plus against the Pikeman. One power point away from getting the Darkness unlocked, and Isengard's player needs still around 4 power points for the Freezing Rain, which is gonna be needed. Level 10 Gondor Knights, Gandalf, Drama Troll, Trolls, everything. But your heart desire is on the field now. A lot of trebuchets though, that's gonna keep them away from this area they cannot commit. Because the thing with the trebuchets is they're gonna knock down the enemy trolls all the time. So they won't get the chance to attack. Isengard is retreating now, knowing that he will get attacked very soon. He has also lords on the field, which is gonna be needed to cripple down the enemy Gandalf. But... Do they also have the damage boost they need to burst down the enemy Gandalf in time? I mean, yes, Easter Light can also deal a lot of damage to the opponent Gandalf, but with the heal he can sustain to full HP. Alrighty. So they are gathering now in the middle of the map. And they are getting ready for the attack, guys. They are getting ready for the attack. Uh, Pippin at the bottom right side. Gondor Knights. Almost the power points he needs for the darkness. He's using industry on those slaughterhouses. Getting now the Witch King on the field as he's on the way. And yeah, the Gondor Isengard team, they are, you know, kind of waiting now to get attacked. Uh, he knows they cannot afford to go forward just yet because Isengard is still recovering, kind of. All the furnaces are only level 1, as you can see. Only two of them are level 3, that's it. So his resource income is not look looking that great. And with the Lumber Mills in long terms, is you're gonna run out of trees eventually. And you might be forced to switch to slaughterhouses later on from the settlements. Witch King is on the field, he has to avoid fighting against Gandalf though, because Gandalf's Easter Light is bursting down the Witch King to around 30% HP. And if you can hit the Lightning Sword and the Easter Light against Witch King, you might be also able to hunt it to zero him, you know? Burst him down just like that. I don't know if this is gonna be enough. Lord has to get ready to cripple down this Gandalf in time. But again, Isengard is far, far away from getting anywhere close to get the Freezing Rain unlocked, while this Mordor player is gonna get. The, you know, in this fight, eventually, his darkness unlocked. In darkness, Witch King, Drama Troll, I, on these trolls, <laughs> holy moly, you know, they're gonna just kinda one-shot everything on the field, just like that. There is no counterplay anymore. Oh, 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 Gandalf, he's looking to cripple with the Lords, has to cancel it, because if you don't know, there is a maximum range from the Lords' is cripple, and it's one of the few abilities in the FMU1 that can be actually missed. So if the, if the target you are trying to cripple is far away from you, you will always be forced to cancel it, otherwise you're gonna get it on cooldown, but it's gonna be missed. Rolls are charging, guys. This is gonna be Fiesta. Boo, yeah! Power points unlocked for the, for the darkness. Choose it and use it. That's an Easter Light, I don't know what's happening. Easter Light is gonna be used. Gandalf is going down from the blue Gondor player. The Gandalf from the green Gondor player has to peel back. The trolls are dying. Darkness was available, but he was busy to not use it. Alvin Elias was used. The Gandalf from the Green Gondor player was able to save the day. Yes, he's all about to hit level 8. And Isengard will actually be able to win this fight in the middle. Isengard Gondor team, I mean. Witch King has to be extremely careful, by the way. And looks like Isengard player went also for the Tainted Land, right? Yeah, he went for the Tainted Land to be able to cover this one. Gandalf is also offering leadership, but it's only armor, and they have only the war chant. Faramir is also level 5, also armor leadership, but once again, armor doesn't help that much. At this point of the game, it's it's gonna be so nice if you actually, if the Gondor player would make Boromir and put them close to the combos, eventually get level 4, 
That's gonna cause the combos from Isengard deal 60% more damage. And this is gonna change everything. Because trust me, damage leadership is awesome in BFMU1. They have a lot of armor, but no, lead but no leadership. Lord has been taken down, he's only level 1. The Witch King is full HP, so he doesn't need to be too scared about this situation. Darkness is available now for the Mordor player. And there are still some highly leveled Gondonites from the Blue Gonzo player. And the rain is not available, and even if he uses rain now, rain, you can cover this rain or darkness, that's gonna be a big commitment. Witch King has to fly a little bit closer to give leadership to the Skonda Knights as they are charging in. Gondor Knights with this much leadership, trust me, they're gonna hit very hard. But Gandalf is always hitting hard, knocking them down on the ground. But you, say, you can see that, right? The combos are not able to hurt them. Why? Because they have no damage leadership. The trolls are charging in now. That's a mistake, sending the trolls one by one. But look how tanky the troll is, do you see that? Do you see that, guys? Darkness, Drama Troll, Witch King. Look how long it takes to this. That's what I was trying to say. Armor doesn't help. The Blue Gondor Knights... The, the Blue Gondor Knights, I can't even talk, are also inside the army. Trying to kill the combos. Gandalf has to be closer, has to use Zap Blast against this combo, against his horses, because they are actually doing so much work right now. That's Easter Light against the Witch King, but Witch King is not gonna get one-shotted, that's not a Nazgul. Uh, Lightning Sword is... Oh, look, he killed three trebuchets with one strike of the Witch King, just like that. And because there is not enough units to shoot down the Witch King, he can do whatever he wants. Farami is not dealing too much damage to the Witch King. Gondor Knights are dominating this fight from the Blue Gondor play with this much leadership. Witch King. Of course, the Drama Troll, if you don't know, is not giving leadership to the Gondor Knights. Troll is slapping, but he's gonna be taken down. The Witch King has to be extremely careful, he's quite slow. Getting damage now is gonna delay his healing progress, because you need to be out of combat for multiple seconds for Witch King to start healing over time. What a turning, what a, what a game, what a turning around actually, right? Because Gonda Isengard team, I mean Isengard was really down, like he had nothing left in his base anymore, and now they are actually having the, having the lead. Is he looking for a base rush? He might, but it looks like the Gonda player is gonna react to this play and closing his gate and hoping for the best. The Gandalf from the blue Gonda player is gonna be also joining the battlefield very soon, it's a level 5 Gandalf. Isengard is sending some more units, he has also lures back in the business. This Gondor player might be buying this camp for a well and sustain for the allied combos from Isengard. This Gandalf is level 8 by the way. Kill is available for the Gondor players, both of them. And the rain is still far away, right? Yeah, he's still like 4 power points, 3.5 power points away from the rain, guys. It's a lot. So Witch King at around 60% HP, Gandalf is back in the business, Witch King is recovering over time, we are getting some more trolls, he's putting some trebuchets in between the buildings to protect them. Yes, also Firestone upgrades, not yet, just yet. But he's going for it. Isengard is a massive army, Gondor player is gonna group with his ally for a war chant play. Lurz is leveling up, level 2 now, level 5 is gonna make him really really strong. Darkness is on cooldown. Do you see that? Wanding Arrow did nothing <laughs> to them, <laughs> but Darkness is still active, of course. Level 10 Gondor Knights are so resistant. So, we're gonna have a massive fight. Xehanort has almost the power points he needs for the Eagles, and there is no counterplay to that. There are no arches, nothing like that. Warchan is being used now. Heal is being used as well. He's gonna get the Eagles unlocked definitely from this fight. Mori is trying to buy some time. Elven allies is gonna be used from the Gondor play as well. Xehanort. That's a... Lightning Sword. Lord is gonna cripple down Gandalf. He won't be able to move. We don't see the cripple animation around the Gandalf, but he's crippled definitely. Trolls are diving in. Look, this troll one shot at Faramir just like that, guys. Level 5. He is. Gandalf is down once again. This Gandalf is almost level 9. But that's one of the matchups in which uh, the Water of Power is not gonna be very efficient because there is just too much leadership and it doesn't deal too much damage to the monsters or the Witch King, of course. The Eagles are doing nothing, they are idle, which he's paying attention to Gandalf, but there is another Eagle summon, and remember, the Gondor player has no more heal. That means there is no way of saving Gandalf, and Gandalf is down, and reviving a Gandalf, who is level 8, will cost them 2600 resources. The Witch King is still alive, the Eagles might be able to finish him, one more hit is needed, but he's charging with the Witch King. That's gonna make... Oh, heal is being used from his ally to heal up the Witch King to almost full HP just like that. And Witch King is alive, which was very important. 
Tarumon is on the field now from the Isengard player. What is going on? Fiesta game, definitely. You will also lose a lot of Condonites. There are some combos coming now. Witch King is full HP, so he doesn't need to be too scared about this situation. Without leadership, they don't deal too much damage. And they're gonna just keep feeding this Witch King now even more and more. He's trying to kill the level 10 Gondonite, and he will be able to do that. And Isengard is gonna lose yet another fight and a lot of combos. That's the Alvin Ally summon now from the blue Gondor player. Rain is yeah, now available finally. He has finally the power points he needs for the freezing rain. But it's so delayed. Uh, Xehanort, the green Gondor player, is 7 power points away from getting the Army of the Dead unlocked from the spellbook. Wizard Gima is only 5 power points away from this point. Looks like he was getting gate rushed or something, I don't know what happened to his face. And uh, Mordor player is like 12 power points away from getting the Balrog summon. And Isengard player is still 20 power points away from that Balrog summon. So, yeah, I believe the Gondor player here is gonna be the first one with the EOD. Just because he's killing so many combos all the time with this much massive leadership. And keep in mind that this is from Isengard. That means, uh, if you don't know how the Freezing Rain works in BFME 1, if you use Freezing Rain as Isengard, enemy will lose all the leadership bonuses. But, if there is any land on the ground from you or from your ally, the enemy can always step... Wait a second, we need to focus on this fight. That's a lot of leadership on this level 10 Gondor Knight, by the way. In the land will be covered. Alvin Wood. New player is pinging and he will be covering. Xehanort is going to cover this one. They have no leadership now on the Alvin Wood. But look how tanky these Gondor Knights are. Do you see that? Level 10. They will just run it off. Just like that. That's what I'm trying to say. Now this is from Gondor player Xehanort. This is from Isengard's player. It means there are so many tools for the Mordor Isengard team to regain the leadership. That's a, that's a gate rush by the way. He's rushing the gate. To destroy those trebuchets. <laughs> Witch King is also very helpful. If he can kill the Citadel, that's gonna delay his Gandalf. Yes, like look this Gondor nice. Do you see that? How tanky they are. Level 10, they have so much damage that's unbelievable. There are also some Elven warriors inside. He has to use literally a rain now to make them weaker. He was able to kill all the trebuchets. All of them. The Witch King is flying away. He doesn't know when the Gandalf is gonna be back in the business. And he's gonna be there very, very soon. But he lost a lot. Like, you know, these trebuchets, guys, they cost 700 E. So he lost like five of them. There's like 3,000 plus money lost in a couple of seconds. For one Gondor Knight only. I think that's a great trade for the blue Gondor player. Pippin is back in the business. <laughs> Gandalf is gonna be also joining the battlefields now. On his Shadow Fax. There he is. On the other side, Isengard is trying to get ready. Lourdes is only level 2, almost level 3. But he is still far away from getting his leadership unlocked. Gandalf is also on the fields now from the green Gondor player Xehanort. Witch King didn't get killed one time in this game. And he knows, they know, that Freezing Rain is gonna be on cooldown. After 3 minutes, Freezing Rain automatically falls off. That means by the time Isengard Gondor team are gonna be able to reach the site, the Freezing Rain's effect is almost gonna be gone. You know? And that's why Mordor player should be just waiting. This effect on the trolls doesn't work by the way, if you don't know. So if you step on the enemy land with the trolls, you don't get leadership back. It only works on normal units. So on the Gondor Knights for example. Look at this now, they leave the land and Abracadabra they have leadership back. You see them glowing already, right? And yeah, not enough leadership back, uh, not enough leadership available for the Isengard Gondor team. He was not even reviving his Farah Mages yet, he has no money. His Double Siege doesn't have too many resource building inside the base, only 5. So doesn't get too much money either. But now they have to deal with 2 Wizards eventually, right? Let's see. There are no Catapults inside the Mordor base and there are no Catapults also. There's one coming now from the Siege Works finally. Uh, but this is not going to be enough to deal the damage he's looking for. However, with the Darkness, which is available now. Almost available. They might do stuff. A lot of trolls, they are just waiting for the leadership to come back. Which is going to be the case pretty much now. You can start, you know, you can see them glowing now. When they are glowing, you see, you know that they have leadership back. 
Eagle Summon is gonna be ready very soon for both the players. Remember, they were both using it at pretty much the same time. Lord is level 3 now. Saruman, Elvin, Ally Summon will be used from the Green Gunter player. It's a big commitment. There are some signifiers on the ground for some reason. I don't know about this. Furnaces are going down. If you put Lords close to the combos, they can share, he can share experience with this combos with, with Gandalf being nearby. Oh, 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 diving in. Choke point. Nice fireball actually from Saruman. Level 9 Gandalf, guys. Visa Plus. Beautiful Visa Plus. But he is going down before. He was using heal a little bit too late. That's an Eagle Summon from the Blue Gondor player. But he's gonna be able to kill Saruman, yes. Does he have the power points? He's almost the power points he needs for Army of the Dead. This Gandalf is level almost 10 too. And if he gets level 10 before the Army of the Dead, guys, trust me. He will be able to destroy the Army of the Dead, but that's not gonna be the case now. Army of the Dead is gonna be unlocked. It's gonna be used immediately from the Blue Gondor player. Nazgul, Witch King, he can chase down this Gandalf, no big deal. And Morty is only 7 power points away as well from getting the Balrog unlocked. During all this time, the Eagles were used offensively and he's going for a Gate Rush against the Blue Gonzo player. He was able to destroy the Zita, that's gonna delay his Gandalf. He needs to send some help. They are chasing down Gandalf, will they be able to take him down? Does he have heal though? The answer is no. And Witch King is actually going to take down this Gandalf, who is almost level 10. Almost level 10 and he's going down. 5 power points away from getting the Balrog unlocked. And this Gondor Knight is, you know, he keeps going. The Zita is down still. He knows all I need to do is delay Gandalf. And he will manage to do that. The AOD is on cooldown, but it looks like Saiyan or the Gondor player has not the money he needs for reviving his Gandalf. What a game. What a game. What a game. If Isengard's player would get Lords level 5, maybe. He's level 4 now. He has to revive his Saruman. He has to revive his Lords. And Isengard is still 13 power points away from getting his own Balrog summon unlocked. How much this Gondor is away? He's like 2 power points, 2.5 from his AOD. But the thing is, it's so hard for Xehanort to kill stuff. There are only trolls, Nazgûls, all the, all the stuff which is really hard for Gondor to deal with. That's why he needs the assistance of his ally. But this Gondor has lost a lot, guys. He lost a lot, but luckily he has some money. He's also getting the farm from his ally. He has now three farms outside, should be able to recover over time. But also not enough money to get Gandalf back. Because of course, 2400. That's a Gandalf level 7. That's a Gandalf level 9, who costs of course more to revive. Okay? So great. Great situation. And Mordor might get Balrog, and Balrog all alone is able to one-shot the entire base. And if they can destroy this, if he can destroy this Citadel, guys, with the Nazgul and the Witch King, that's gonna buy him so much time. He's finally demolishing the Siege Works, he knows he cannot afford it. He's gonna build another tower here for the defense, but there are two Nazguls at the same time. I mean, Witch King is more resistant than any, than any other Nazgul anyway. The Citadel is going down, and that's gonna buy him so much time against the Gondor player. That is another rush is happening, but the thing is, that is only that's only a level 3 Gondor Knight, but that's a level 10 Gondor Knight on the other side. The commitment against the buildings. Kill is being used. The Zita is down indeed. And that's gonna delay his Gandalf big time. So ideal maybe this Gandalf is gonna no, definitely this Gandalf is gonna be on the field sooner than this Gandalf from the Green Gondor player. Very well done here. Fireball is gonna be used from Saruman, but the Gondor Knights are gonna be still able to survive. Looks like Isengard is going for another attack. Rain is going to be available as well as... Yeah, Rain is available, Warchan is available, all the good stuff. Maybe he can make something happen. No catapults on the field anymore, only trolls. And once you use Rain, they're going to lose all the leadership bonuses. But Lourdes is only level 4. Still no damage. No damage leadership. Witch King has to be careful. There are many, many multiple buildings level 3. Saruman is doing nothing actually inside the base. He has to react now. If this Lords can get level 5, trust me, that's gonna be a huge power spike. That's why, you know, imagine him having Lords from the beginning, level 5, that would be so much easier for the Isengard Condor team, but this game isn't over yet, because Mordor might get the power points he needs from this fight. He needs only 4 power points for the Balrog summon. If he can deal with every single combo in Lords, he can get the power points he needs. He can get it. 
So the Gondor player, Xehanort, has now the Citadel back up on the field, but he has no money. He's not gonna even try to revive his Gandalf anymore because he's forced to make more, you know, more Gondor Knights because he keeps losing them all the time. Rain has to be used now, by the way. He needs to use Rain. Land. Rain. Cover. Potentially another cover now. Who is this, whose land is this now? I'm, I'm actually curious. I believe from the Gondor player, from the blue Gondor player, Xehanort is not using his own land. Isengard has no bonuses, and look how easy it is to defend against his Isengards now without leadership, you know? Xehanort is still two power points away from his own Army of the Dead Summon, but will he be able to get it without anything left on the field? Because the time is not in their favor. Moda has now the middle camp, making sure that the Gondor player cannot buy it when he gets to summon the Balrog Summon. He's two power points away from that. He knows that he can one-shot the entire Gondor castle with the Balrog all alone. One and a half power points away. Lourdes is running for his life. Killing Lourdes is going to give him also a lot of power points now. Nazgûl's are committing. And look the power points now, guys. One more hit. He's going to use Cripple just why not. He knows he's going to go down. Half a power points now away. This is crazy. Balrog summon is gonna be unlocked very soon. He has all the Nazgûls on the field. Two Nazgûls and a Witch King, and he keeps them alive all the time as well. Gandalf is back in the business from the you know blue Gondor player. The green Gondor player cannot afford that. He is still poor, you know, he has no money. Isengard lost his lords, but Saruman was doing absolutely nothing. What is this Saruman doing? What is this Eagle Summon? Oh, okay, that's a Nazgul down. That's a nice lightning sword, but he's gonna cancel it. Easter Light is going to be able to finish off one of the eagles just like that. One more hit. Can he save him? Does he have heal? Yeah, he has heal, so he's safe for now. If Mordor can kill this eagle, he will have the power points, I believe. Or almost the power points. Let's see. Oh my goodness, that's so close. <laughs> like a quarter, less than a quarter. There are some Gondor Knights coming from the green Gondor player. If he can kill them, if he can kill them, he's going to have the Balrog Summon unlocked. And also Xehanort is trying to get the power points he needs for the Army of the Dead Summon. Still not reviving his Gandalf because he can't afford it. Mordor is getting really close for this power spike. Balrog is game changing. In this case, even game ending. That's a AOD summon from the blue Gonzo player to break the gate. Eagle summon right after. AOD is able to break the gate if you don't know, if the gate is closed. If the gate is open, it's not possible for AOD for some reason to target the gate. Okay. Balrog power points unlocked. He's gonna get it now. He might use Balrog right there, and that's gonna be also the case. Balrog of Moria. Oh, yeah. This guy is looking like a madman to me. Look, look this. Look this, Balrog, guys. Moria is proud of you. And there is no Gandalf that can take you down, that, that can take you down either. Gondor is gonna get defeated first, I'm assuming. He has nothing left in his base anymore. Isengard is gonna go for a breath fire against the buildings. He doesn't care about level 3 buildings. This is no... Not a, you know, creature from this world. He's from the ancient world. He is one-shotting everything. Warchen is gonna be used on this one crossbow man to make him strong enough to deal with Balrog. 1v1, Balrog against crossbow man. <laughs> no, that's not gonna work, my friend. Crossbow man, you need one H. One ages. Oh, there is a... Eh, okay, Xehanort was able to get the power points he needed. That's so funny, though, this interaction, right? Because this AOD is still lasting on the field. Even though Xehanort got defeated. And Isengard, last man standing, that is GG in my book. What a great performance from the players. And Mordo Gondor did it at the end of the day. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. And also, subscribe for more content like this. I see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves and as always, stay beyond standards. Peace, guys.